Hey folks, let's clarify a few things about literals const, constants, and C. Welcome back, everybody. So in my last video, I talked about the const keyword and some of the somewhat surprising ways that it confuses students. But it seems that I wasn't as careful as I should have been in my wording, and I guess I said some things that I guess confused some people or could have confused some people. Anyway, the point is I really appreciate the feedback I get on this channel. You know, I sit down really quickly to record a video, and I don't always get it right. And so I really appreciate those of you that point out the areas where I need to clarify things a little bit. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. I just want to clarify few things and try to be a little more precise than I was last week. So in case you missed it, that video was a discussion about const. Specifically, it was a response to students who were running into frustrating issues where they have const variables that they expect to behave a certain way. And what they're seeing are some compiler behaviors that they just didn't understand. Specifically, they were seeing messages about certain things that they thought were constant, not being constant expressions. And of course, in that video, I used the word constant a lot. And as some of you pointed out, I wasn't really precise in what I meant by constant. So when we're thinking about constants, usually we are thinking about a few things. And this is not always a super defined term, but we're typically thinking about some kind of symbol that we can define, and it's going to have a value, and that value is never going to change, or even better, it cannot change throughout the life of our program. This, of course, is in contrast to variables, which change or vary throughout the program as we need them to. Now, of course, each language provides different features or tools that we can use to implement this idea of a constant. For example, in Java, you have the final keyword, which says, Says, this is the last and final value that you can assign to it. You cannot reassign it. You cannot overload it. It's final. So in Ruby, any variable that starts with a capital letter is considered a constant. And of course, in very Ruby fashion, I can totally reassign it but it will give me a warning. And so I guess since I can change it, is this really a constant? Uh, it depends on your definition, but I feel like this is very on brand for Ruby. But I'm not here to talk about Ruby. Let's talk about C. What does C have to offer as far as constants go? Some commenters, basically said there are no constants in C. And I think I mostly agree, so let's see what we do have in C. So probably the closest thing we have to a symbolic constant is an enum, which I didn't talk about in that video actually in any video so far. So yeah, let's add that to the list of future video topics. But an enum lets you define types where variables of that type can be one of a set of multiple predefined values. Now this is sort of a special purpose constant. It is unchangeable and it's a compiler defined symbol. But that said, it's probably not something I would use if I wanted to say define a constant array size or a predefined memory offset or something like that. But I do want to mention it for completeness. Next, we have literals. If I type a 10 in my program, this is an integer literal. It doesn't have an address, at least not one we can meaningfully use in our program. This 10 is also a constant expression, meaning that it's a mathematical expression that is defined at compile time that will always evaluate to the same value. So 10 plus 2 is also a constant expression, as is 5 times 10 plus 2. The compiler can evaluate all of these expressions at compile time without looking at any other code and without running any of the code. And of course, I can do just about any arithmetic inside a constant expression, and it'll still be a constant expression. If I call functions, introduce variables, or assign new values to variables, well, it's no longer a constant expression. So next up, we have preprocessor macros, or pound defines, as they're sometimes called. So if I put this in my program, it allows me to put a name with this integer literal, and then use the name instead. Now, since we have a name, we might think, yeah, that's a symbolic constant. And it sort of is, but keep in mind that the C compiler doesn't see this as a symbolic constant. The preprocessor is just going to insert this literal throughout the C code wherever I use this symbol. Also, something that I forgot to mention in the previous video is that macros, these macros that we might use to implement the idea of constants in our programs, well, I can redefine them. I can come in here, let's say that I've pound defined uh, B to be 10, and I can then again say pound define B to be 45. Now, if I come down here, you can see that, yeah, it still compiles, but it gives me a warning. But I guess the point is that I can redefine them. So if it is necessary in your definition for a constant to be unchangeable, then I guess this isn't a constant either. And then last but not least, we have const variables like this one. Now, the point of the previous video was to point out that even though const looks like the word constant, this is a variable that has been tagged as read only. It isn't a constant expression, except that 
some C compilers treat it like it is, especially newer compilers. And for what it's worth, in my opinion, it makes complete sense for this to be treated as a constant expression since its value is completely predictable at compile time. But anyway, the real point of that video was that this is confusing. That's really all I was trying to get at. Now, one thing I did say in that previous video is that it is sometimes possible to change a const variable through pointer tricks, but that it's really, it's something that doesn't really make any sense to do. Now, what I should have said is that, I mean, all that's true, but trying to modify a const variable is undefined in C. That means that it's, yeah, it's a meaningless thing to do, but also that you really can't guarantee what's going to happen if you try. And of course, you know me, we're going to try. It's fun to try new things, so let's try it out and see what happens. Now, I'm trying this in Linux. Your results may vary depending on the machine you're on and the compiler you're using, and of course, which version of compiler. So, so I'm starting off with this code that I wrote for last time. I have a pound to find up here, a const int a that I'm setting equal to 10. And what we're gonna try to do is just to see if we can modify this variable a, this const variable a, and give it a different value. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to come down here and just modify this really quick. And what I'm going to do here, what we were doing before is just printing out the address of A. Let's just print out the actual value of A. And yeah, we'll put that in like this. Mostly because I'd really like to see if we're successful at doing this. Okay, so just to make sure we've got a good starting point, I can come down here and we can run it. And you can see, yes, we get the address of A and we get the value of A, which is 10. Okay, now let's see, let's just try the easiest thing that I can think of that might actually work on some versions of GCC. And that is to just, if we come down here, we might be able, I mean, yeah, we tried before saying A equals something, that didn't work, so I won't waste your time on that. But let's instead come down here and say, we wanna get the address of A, so we get a pointer, and then we're gonna cast that address to an int pointer, because if it's a pointer to a constant, it's not gonna let us mess with it. And then just for clarity, I'll put these in parentheses and we will dereference this pointer and we'll set that equal to five. So that's gonna be our new value. We just wanna try to set this to five. Now, of course, if our variable up here was not const, let's just try that really quick. So let's say that this variable was not const and I came down here, then we would come down here and you see this totally works. I can change the value to five, no problem. But if I come up here and it is const, then it compiles fine. But if I run it, you notice we segfault. Now, why are we segfaulting? We know we have an address. We just printed it out before. But the problem here is that the compiler is putting these variables in memory that it has marked as read only. Now, this was most likely done using mmap or mprotect. If you've never heard of mmap, I have a few other videos on it, check those out if you're confused, but it's not too complicated. The compiler just said, hey, I need some memory and this variable, it's read only, so let's mark the memory holding it as read only. And when you do that, if you try to write to that memory, then you get a seg fault on most modern operating systems. Now, one more thing to point out, if you were working on a microcontroller, you might run into another variant of this issue where your compiler actually puts your const variables in flash memory or some other read only memory. And so again, you get the same effect. You basically can't change it because it's in memory that is read only. But that's not the case here. This memory is general purpose RAM. We can we know we can read and write to it. It's just currently marked as read only. So can't we just change the memory protections? And yeah, we can. So this might seem a little weird to some of you. Let's come down here. And what I'm going to do before we try to write to this is we'll just declare ourselves a void pointer P. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take the address of A again, and we're gonna cast this as a uint ptr underscore t. That is an unsigned int type that is defined specifically to hold addresses for doing math with addresses. And then what we are going to do is come here and mask off the low order 12 bits of the address. And the last thing, let's cast it to a void pointer because that's what I'm assigning it to. And it looks like I'm missing a parenthesis. Okay, now why am I doing this? I'm doing this because to change this memory protection, I want to access the page that it's on. And this address in memory might be in the middle of a page. So I'm getting the, the beginning of the page by just masking off these bits. If you're interested in this, let me know. We can talk more about virtual memory pages and offsets and how that all works in a future video. But the point is, is I'm just simply trying to get the address to the front of the page that this variable is stored on. Then what I can do is come down here and call mprotect and we're gonna pass in that address and the size of the block, which we're just gonna do one page, so 4096. And let's set our protection flag. So let's, we're gonna make it readable and writable. 
Okay, so now if we come down here and we try to compile it, okay, yeah, no, whoops, that didn't work. Uh, so I'm missing a couple of header files. I need to include standard int.h. That will let me do the unptr underscore t type. And then let's include also sys mman.h. That's, that's where we get mprotect and a bunch of our memory management stuff. Now, if we compile it, we should be okay. Okay, so now it does compile. And if we come down here and we run it, and if we run it, it sec faults again. I just realized I messed one more thing. I was trying to take the complement of this little mask. Sorry about that. I was throwing away the wrong part of the address. Now, if we come down, we compile it and we run it. Now, this is really interesting. So you notice it no longer seg faults. I I did change the memory permission, so it allows me to write to this memory. But you notice that the value of A still never changed. It's still 10. So what happened? Well, to look at this, let's just take a quick look at the assembly. So if I use object dump and let's the example. So what this is just going to do is it's going to disassemble my code really quick. And let's come up here and just look at what's going on. If I can find main. Where is main? OK, here's main. So here in main, you'll notice that right here, the the place where we're actually passing our variable that we want to print to printf is right here. And you notice this 0xa, that's basically just 10. So it's not actually reading the value from memory. The compiler is just saying, hey, I know this never changes. So it's just treating this, this a like a constant expression. And it's basically sticking a 10 right in there where I wanted to read the value from a. It's like, hey, a is never going to change. So why bother reading it from memory over and over again? It will be faster to just stick a 10 in there. OK, so that's not looking good at this point, are we defeated? Yeah, basically, if our compiler isn't going to read our variable, then it's going to be really tough to change that value unless we had the program rewrite its own code in memory, which is getting ridiculous. Well, honestly, this whole exercise is a bit ridiculous. But before we wrap up, just one more thing we can try. Uh, you know, we could come up here just and I just want to show you that this is possible is we could come up here and say this is going to be a volatile const int. Now, this may also seem completely ridiculous. I mean, what kind of crazy thing is a volatile constant? Again, remember that const doesn't mean constant, it means read only. And volatile just means it can change unpredictably. For example, due to some kind of hardware change that was not a product of our program. So now what we have here is A is a read only variable that can change in strange ways. And so now if we come back down here and we compile it, oh, I forgot to save it. Now let's compile it. And now if we run it, you notice that it does change. So we succeeded in changing the value of A because now it's actually gonna read from memory because we told it it's volatile but the compiler made us work for it. With older compilers, it used to be easier to work around const. So I guess that's probably a sign of progress. But I guess the point of all of this is all that stuff I just did, don't do it. We're muddling around in undefined behavior land and that's not where you wanna be unless you're just exploring, trying to understand how computers, compilers and operating systems work, in which case be my guest, you'll learn a lot. So have fun. I hope that clears up a few things from the previous video. And until next week, happy coding everyone. I'll see you later.